An introduction to complex numbers. Complex numbers are numbers of the form a plus bi, where a and b are real numbers. The real number a is called the real part of the number a plus bi, because we can see it's just by itself to the left of the plus sign. The real number b is called the imaginary part of a plus bi, because it gets multiplied next to i, or to i, and we see that i squared is just equal to negative 1. Um, and so since a real number can't be squared uh, to equal a, num a negative number, um, we think of i as an imaginary number because it has this new property. So example, for complex numbers, z equals 1 minus 3i and w equals negative 3 plus 2i, find the following. So z plus w, z minus w, and z times w. So this is really just saying, okay, now that we have these complex numbers, can we still do addition, subtraction, and multiplication like we would with real numbers? And it turns out that we can't. And so when we're adding and subtracting, the real parts get added or subtracted to the real parts, and imaginary parts get uh, added, or, added or subtracted to imaginary parts. And then we'll take a look at uh, the multiplication. So let's take a look at the addition. Uh, z plus w. So first what I'm going to do is just write z plus w. So all I'm doing is just replacing z and w with 1 minus 3i and negative 3 plus 2i. And now when you're first learning you can do this next step and you can skip it once you're feel more comfortable but uh, I'm going to add the real parts together so 1 plus a negative 3 and then add the imaginary parts together negative 3i plus 2i. And so what that gives me is negative 2 um, minus i. So I have it like that. Okay, so let's look at uh, z minus w. So for z minus w, same idea. Oops, let's see, I already have that. So I'm gonna write equals z one minus three i minus negative three plus two i. So this gives me uh, one minus three i plus three minus two i. So remember we have to apply that subtraction to both things within the parentheses. So then I get 4 minus 5i. Okay, um, let's go to z times w. So here, this is going to look a lot like when we multiply binomials together because we have a two-term factor and another two-term factor. So we're actually going to get four terms. So let's see what they are. If we use the FOIL, FOIL just means first, outer, inner, last. So the first two uh, terms are 1 and negative 3. So that would give me a negative 3. Outer would be 1 and 2i, so plus 2i. Uh, inner would be negative 3i and, and negative 3, so it gives me a plus 9i. And then the last two terms are negative 3i and 2i. So when I add those together, I get uh, negative 6i squared. Okay. Um, and so if you're kind of thinking about that, that feels a little weird. Negative 3i times 2i. So this is the negative 3 and the 2 make a negative 6, and the i and the i uh, become i squared. Okay, so now what do I get? Well, I get negative 3 plus 11i, but then when I look at this negative 6 times i squared, well, what we know is that i squared is negative 1. So we can use that to rewrite this as uh, plus negative 6 times a negative 1, because i squared is just equal to negative 1. Now, when that's the case, this just becomes negative 3 plus 11i plus 6, because negative 6 times negative 1 is 6, and then the negative 3 and 6 are actually the real parts. So I do 3 plus 11i. And so that's the result there. So because a complex number has two parts, we can actually use a rectangular coordinate plane to plot complex numbers. We use the horizontal axis to represent the real part. So this is going to be our real part down here. And the vertical axis to represent the imaginary part. So the imaginary part up there. So the complex number a plus bi can be represented by the point a b ah so i have this connection between my complex number a plus b i and its location which is going to be a comma b on the rectangular coordinate plane so i can think of its location like plotting a regular point a comma b so again i have this relationship between a plus b i and the location a b where a is the real part so that's how far i go over right to a on my horizontal axis, and then B is that imaginary part. So imaginary part is the vertical axis, so that's how far I go up or down, and then I arrive at my point. Okay, so sketch example, sketch a graph of the complex numbers Z equals 1 minus 3i and W equals negative 3 plus 2i. So 
again, I have my uh, real axis here and my imaginary axis here. So if we're asked to plot complex numbers, um, so let's start with Z, 1 minus 3i. So I'm going to go to the right 1 and then down 3. So right 1 and then down 3. And then my point here is going to be the location of the complex number Z. When I go to graph W, I have negative 3. So left 3 and then up 2 for the 2i. And then this point in the second quadrant here is going to be the location of the complex number W. 